this is definitely the crappiest quality bracelet I have ever experienced. Today, I'm reviewing this golden Casio A500W after wearing it non-stop for seven days. We're also going to test a couple of strap upgrades on this watch. And I've got an exciting announcement about our next watch of the week, so stick around. I have loved wearing this golden Casio for watch of the week. In fact, I found it so refreshing that I even wore it for a few extra days. And if you want to obtain a Casio A500W, I'll leave a link for you below. So let's start with what I liked about this watch. Despite only being rated as water resistant, it held up well in my hot showers every day. I really like that this watch has four buttons, which allows you to scroll both up and down with ease. And that might not sound like much, but surprisingly, that's more than can be said for a lot of these three button Casios. I also really like that these buttons allow you to auto scroll, so you can just hold it down to go up or down, which is more than can be said for my recent review of the G-Shock GBX100, which was extremely frustrating, and you can watch that review here if you missed it. Speaking of buttons, if we hold down these three particular buttons, we access the LCD test, which is really cool on this watch because we can see all the little individual segments of the world map. I also really liked the viewing angle of this watch, which is quite legible from a number of different angles. I had no issues with it, despite there being what I consider to be a huge gap between the lens and the display. Now, this really reminded me of the W217H, which had a similar size gap, but it's a bit hard to tell as we've actually performed a hydro mod on this or filled it with oil. And if you missed that video, you can check that one out here. I really appreciated having five alarms on this watch. It really was so much handier than the standard single. But was this enough to wake me up for the sleepy goat alarm test? The answer is yes, kind of. You see, much like my review of the W217H before it was modified, which is here if you missed it, I found that the large cavity between the lens and the display made the alarm sound quite loud. But that being said, there were some days where I was too damn sleepy and it did not manage to wake me up. But why don't you see for yourself with a sound test? I also quite like the weight of this watch and how it feels on my wrist. It feels lightweight, but not flimsy. So I would like to see exactly how much this thing weighs. 50.1 grams, but feeling solid is one thing. How did it hold up at my beach volleyball games? Did it get any scratches or sand? Well, I'm giving it a good polish. There's definitely a few light scuffs and scratches. I'll see if I can rub those out. They may just be streaks. No, those are definitely scratches. Oh man, and you wouldn't believe what happened at beach volleyball that made me really love these adjustable straps. So I was playing my game and obviously I had this watch on my wrist. And what I found is that when I dove into the sand to get the ball, my arm tensed and it felt like this bracelet was going to burst off because it was so tight. So what I did is I went back to the table and my friend happened to have her keys. So I just used those to make an adjustment to the strap like so loosened it up a little bit, and actually a comment had come in from Red Wyvern at the perfect time, letting me know that for adjusting the strap, you really want to aim for about two fingers width um, that can be jammed in there so that you've got enough breathing room. So that's exactly what I did. And for the rest of the game, I had no issues with it being too tight. I will say though, that once you've got it at about this looseness, this is when I started to notice arm hair pulls. But that's it for the functionality. Let's talk about the way this thing looks. It has a beautiful golden strap and bezel, and I really love how eye-catching this thing is. I even love the way the light reflects off this thing. It's like a little mirror. Check it out. Now, I know this watch is shiny, but overall, I think it looks really classy and retro. But we did have some mixed comments on our unboxing video as to whether this watch is more blingy or elegant. Here's the link to that video if you missed it. So, I ran a community poll for you guys to decide once and for all. Here are the results. Most of you guys voted for elegant, and about 23% voted for blingy. And I think the best comments we got were these ones. Depending on how you accessorize, it could be both. And 
elegant in a shirt and blingy in polos. So there you have it. It really does depend how you wear it. And I agree, it really is quite versatile. Over the one week with this watch that I wore it, I tried it with t-shirts, a button-up, a polo, and even a jersey to my volleyball games. And look, I'm not gonna call it elegant or blingy as a definitive answer. It's up to your perception. But all I know is I love the way this watch looks either way. And if you'd like to obtain a Casio A500W for the best price, I've left a link for you in the description. Bubble says to very quietly and carefully click that like button because now it's time to go through the things. Uh-oh. Good girl. Because now it's time to go through the things that I disliked about this watch. I'm not the biggest fan of these particular straps. They are pretty rigid and I would have much preferred had they gone with a gold version of the A700W straps, which I know they do produce. These straps I've found to be much more flexible, they look a lot cleaner, and I've found them to be less prone to pulling your arm hairs. And that's why I've got these two strap upgrade options to test coming up shortly. My next issue comes with the bezel. Why isn't it made of metal? This resin, as we saw, is actually easy to scuff and scratch. If anyone has any idea why Casio might have done this other than saving money, I'd love to hear why below. And speaking of the bezel, this thing is an absolute stain magnet. Now check this out, if I so much as touch it, there is a big greasy fingerprint there. In fact, throughout this whole shoot, I've been having to constantly wipe it down because of how many fingerprints it attracts. I'd also like to point out that the colour match between the bezel and this strap is not quite perfect. And I feel like that's another thing that could have been addressed if Casio had made the bezel out of metal. My next issue with this watch is the fact that Casio decided to make this buckle silver instead of a nice matching gold, which would have been incredibly easy for them to do. I'll also say that this buckle is quite flimsy. If you'll see here, mine is deformed from those times I needed to adjust it at volleyball, which is quite disappointing, and I feel that that's contributed to its stability as well. If I flip it over, you can see that mine actually has a little bit of give to it and can be slid around, which I'm not a fan of. Despite having a good backlight, I did find it a challenge to do things in the dark as every time you press a button, it turns the backlight off. I also dislike that Casio went with a resin screen lens which are so prone to scratches that I felt compelled to equip a screen protector. Now if you missed the unboxing video for this watch, we had to find one that was close enough because these things are incredibly hard to find. And as you can see, it kind of misses the corners but it does at least a good enough job. Despite the issues I've had with this watch, I must say I really love having it in my collection and it's been a pleasure to wear it for the last one week. If you do decide to buy an A500W using the link below, I'd advise doing what I did and having a look at your collection when deciding which color scheme to get, as I find it's always good to have something a little bit different in your collection. Ram that like button because now it's mod time where we test these two alternative bracelets. Let's try one on. All right, there we have it. This is the Milanese bracelet. And as you can see, it has these quick release spring bars there, which were very easy to install. Uh, what do you think about how it looks? Um, there's a bit of a, a step down in the width there, I guess, but uh, let's try it on and see how comfy it is. Lock it in there, and final lock there. There we go. So I'm already gonna tell you, I'm, I'm literally feeling a pinch in my arm here already, which is very surprising given the way this thing looks. But um, anyway, uh, in terms of how it looks, uh, to be honest, I feel like it's a little bit feminine, like it's a little bit thin, and just the way that it looks isn't really for me. So we're gonna move on to the next strap, which is this buckle type. Now this is quite interesting. It looks very, very flimsy. Just look at how, what? Look at how just jangly and crappy this is. It doesn't have any butterfly clasps. So I'm guessing, oh man, look at that. Just silver there as well, not even gold. God, should I even install this thing? Well, let's give it a fair go. Let's give it a fair go. Man, 
Oh, it's already pulling my hairs just by doing this. I'm not even joking. Let's put it on. Oh, man. What the? What on earth? Look at this. I can't even... This is definitely the crappiest quality bracelet I have ever experienced in my life. Look, there is no way in hell that I am keeping this clasp on. It just looks so bad and feels like crap. So we are going to remove it, but... Hey, at least we tried it on. Ah, there we go. Oh my lord, guys. Never have I been so relieved to have an original strap back on a watch in my entire life. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. It is now time for our announcement. <coughs> there will be no community poll to decide on our next watch of the week. I repeat, there will be no community poll. Why, you may ask? Well, as our Patreon and channel members already know from our sneak peek, we have another super special watch that's arrived and that's skipping the queue. Fresh off the boat from Japan, our next watch of the week is the highly anticipated WS1700H. Boom! And I am so hyped to have this thing here in Australia, as this thing is almost impossible to get a hold of right now. That's right, this thing is in such high demand that the prices have been skyrocketing on the secondary market. So make sure you're a subscriber with notifications on so you don't miss it when we unbox this beast as our next watch of the week. So are you as hyped as I am for this watch? Let me know below. Here's some more great content for you to watch next. And here's a link to our Patreon page if you'd like to see more sneak peeks like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next review.